King can't really fight, and his luck is somewhat questionable, but what he can do without fail is be in the right place at the wrong time. An example of this was him receiving a visit from a giant crow inside of his apartment as he is playing video games, with Saitama luckily there to help kill the flying monster. But there's more to the man with the prominent scar. In order to get a full picture of King, we need to look at his life beyond his hero status and analyze the simple and solitary way he lives by asking ourselves, who is King? And how did he become a member of the Saitama group? Looks and Abilities King has long, slicked back blonde hair and bright blue eyes. He's also very lean and tall, as well as older than both Saitama and Genos. However, he's still only 29 years old and younger than many other S Class heroes. Before the start of the series, King had much shorter, parted hair that more closely depicts his loner and homebody nature prior to gaining a role in the Hero Association. Just meant as a tease, King actually passed by in the very first episode of the anime wearing a hoodie, a cap, and a backpack, likely full of games. And a few seconds afterwards, a monster begins devastating the area nearby. Why I mention this? Well, if you know King, then you also know that trouble is never far behind, with Saitama usually cleaning up the mess. We're going to be getting into everything King can do with his limited power, but before then, don't forget to drop a like and subscribe to Plot Armor with notifications on, because when it comes to bringing you some of the best One Punch Man content on the platform, Plot Armor has you covered. King is also referred to as the strongest man on Earth and the hero's hero. But since these titles were actually due to Saitama's acts of heroism, he has to resort to intimidation tactics so he can avoid dying when faced with threats. The most infamous of King's abilities is his King Engine. Though believed to be the sound of him preparing for battle, it is just King's heart beating so loudly that it can be heard from the outside. In fact, the more anxious and afraid King is, the more effective it is on his opponents due to the sound increasing accordingly. This wouldn't work without King's reputation of being one of the strongest men and also his severe expressions. Speaking of which, King also relies on his intimidating face to deter monsters or villains from attacking him. With King having no known fighting prowess to rely on, he has perfected his glacial stare towards enemies. He has even scared off monsters he didn't even know were there just by putting on his battle face during the raid on the Monster Association. Not only that, but one of the monsters got so scared it stabbed itself to death with its bones. Along the same vein, I'd also include King's ability to keep a straight face to be one of his strongest techniques. Even when inside he's absolutely terrified and ready to bow down and beg for his life, like during his fight with Platinum S, his facial expression is stern and cold, almost blank, revealing nothing of his true thoughts. I mentioned earlier that King's luck was questionable, but how does it function as an ability? Well, for starters, King has the misfortune of attracting the attention of mysterious beings whenever he goes out to buy a video game or even at home. Also, since his reputation paints him as such an impressive man, he is forced to deal with attempts on his life from criminals as well. This may make it seem like King is constantly in danger or on the verge of dying, but his luck also tends to keep him alive. If it weren't for heroes like Saitama arriving in the nick of time, though Saitama wishes he could arrive sooner, King would have been long dead. In fact, King was only given credit for Saitama's deeds because he just so happened to be there, and just so happened to survive thanks to the hero's interference. And that's why I wouldn't quite say it's good or bad luck, it's just luck that sways back and forth like a pendulum, and we can only hope that it continues to keep King alive. A bonus talent that King has is his gaming skills. Long before gaining his hero name, King won gaming tournaments all the time, and his expertise persists even now because anytime he plays against Saitama, he obliterates him and leaves the bald man fuming. But he has also beaten Garo, Suiru, and a number of other strong opponents easily in fighting games, where they were using VR sets to show off real martial arts, and he was only using a gamepad. Aside from those abilities, King also uses King Hand, his analytical skills, and his ultimate Hellfire Burst Wave Motion Cannon. If King's heartbeat does not scare off his target, then he tries placing his hand on their shoulder to further intimidate them and dissuade them from fighting him. This move is called King Hand, alluding to it being a heavy hand of a higher ranking person with more power behind them. On the other end of the spectrum, King also employs his gaming expertise and abilities to strategize and predict his opponent's moves within a battle, ensuring he can make it out somehow. This relies heavily on verbal bluffs instead of physical ones, such as pointing out the uneven ground between Homeless and Burst feet to trigger a slew of worries that weren't even in his mind until King said it. But we'll be going more deeply into that confrontation later. Saving the best for last, we have to discuss King's Ultimate Hellfire Burst Wave Motion Cannon, which not only helped defeat the vomited ugly, but cemented his position as a hero's hero. A number of S-Class heroes around were either incapacitated 
animated like Tatsumaki, or putting all their hope in King being the victor like Child Emperor. In terms of how it looked, a massive blast of energy is shot from King's hand to demolish his enemies within seconds of impact, including monsters like Platinum S. With this destructive speed and power, not many heroes can even compare to that level of talent, save for Saitama. And you know what, since we're on the topic, let's get into how the two men first met. This is King's first meeting with Saitama pre-series. Before Saitama became the overpowered Baldi that we all know and love, he was a normal guy just like King, who would cross paths with vicious monsters to help save helpless people. Around that time, when Saitama still had hair and got plenty injured, King was attacked by one of those random monsters. In fact, the pink tentacle monster slashed his face so badly that he ended up with the three deep marks across his eye that became somewhat of a trademark. At this point, King was going by his real name, which isn't known to the audience just yet, and Saitama wasn't acquainted with him. King was simply a poor soul, bloody from being in the way of a monster's rampage. The very first monster we're introduced to in the story, Vaccine Man, is killed by Saitama, but the credit wrongly goes to King. He just so happened to be in the area and fell on the monster's body parts. And the same thing would happen over and over again. Saitama would kill a monster and King just so happened to be the person who was still there when his corpse was found. And with this repeating enough times, King gained his notoriety and reputation for killing strong mysterious beings when in fact, it was all Saitama's work. Afterwards, without even passing the hero test, King was sent an S-Class certificate and given his current ranking. Alien Conqueror's Arc When well-known fortune teller Shibabawa dies, all the S-Class heroes are called to meet, with Saitama also in attendance. There, we are given our first glimpse of a stern-faced king, uttering no words during the entire meeting. As the aliens begin to attack a city, Saitama creates a hole in the sturdy building to check out the situation, and King climbs through that same hole. As he is asked his opinion on what to do, seeing as his spaceship is too high to reach for one, King tells them the truth. Nothing I can do. But because of who he is and how he is perceived, they don't understand that King is being honest and explaining that he's just a regular guy with no super jumping or flying powers, and no way to smash a ship and kill aliens. Surprisingly, King notices that the ship is dormant and that it is a good time to call for other heroes like Metal Knight to take charge of the situation. But of course, Tatsumaki, who doesn't believe in leaving her fate to others, gets mad at this and declares she'll just do it herself. All the while, Super Alloy Darkshine is trying to calm her and warn her that she might get killed by King if she pisses him off. The King engine is going off loudly at this point. And you would think that heroes that train and build their bodies to the extreme would immediately sense that someone like King has no special powers, but I guess that's one of the mysteries of One Punch Man. Needless to say, King stays out of this battle and it was a good idea considering how strong Boros turned out to be. King Ark. Yeah, that's right, King has an arc named after him, short as it may be. Besides appearing in the first episode before even Saitama, King also has a starring role in episode 1 of the following season. Our first look at King's abilities comes as he encounters a perverted mysterious being called Tongue Stretcher. This monster used to be human, but loves reptiles so much that he transformed into this and now intends to use his long, vile tongue to harass cute girls. In the panic of everyone fleeing, King's hat is blown off and his frightening stare is revealed. A dark aura surrounds King and the monster openly admits to being startled by him. As King's engine begins to charge up and his expression darkens, Tongue Stretcher is overwhelmed with fear. Deep down, King just wants to stop being a hero. But with everyone around cheering him on, he has no choice but to continue this facade. Thankfully, the monster knows of King and his deeds, so he collapses to the ground and begs for forgiveness. King, continuing to feel burdened by this situation, isn't doing a single thing, and now the monster is having seizures, as said by someone in the crowd. With the monster taken care of, everyone starts to surround King, and we get the sense that he is really uncomfortable, both with the attention and the amount of people there. When people speak to him, he doesn't mind, but when a man asks for a handshake, he just says he's busy, as he probably knows that if he shakes one person's hand, then they'll all be lining up soon enough and he won't be able to get back to playing his games. After getting away, King makes his way back home when he comes across Machine God G4, who intends to kill him. Even in the face of imminent danger, King does not break from the persona that the public believes in. He calmly states, You're aware I'm King, Class S Rank 7 Hero, and the strong Strongest man on earth, fully expecting this to make the killer robot back down. Instead, King's words just spurred on further, making it draw its golden blade from its back. As the wind from the giant blade blows King's hat off, his King engine begins to rev up. Meanwhile, the onlookers are commenting about no monster having survived after hearing the engine, completely unaware of how terrified King must be. A battle machine has no sense of preservation the way a monster or a human would. So, having a reputation like King's means nothing when G4's goal is to simply gather intel for his creators and measure strength of heroes. 
It's like expecting to be able to scare a toaster before it jump scares you. Not gonna happen. Luckily, G4 says he only wants to fight King at his full power, and King uses that as a means to stall the fight. He tells the robot that he needs to use the bathroom, otherwise he won't be able to focus on the fight, and the data G4 will acquire will be inaccurate. King uses verbal bluffs to the fullest here, knowing he has no other way out. More understanding than we'd expect of a monster, G4 allows King all of 10 minutes. In other words, King has 10 minutes to either find a solution, or come to terms with lots of people being killed because of his escape. What do you think he chooses? Well, after a meltdown in the bathroom with tears and sweat, King can't even handle the situation. With no one around, it is easy for him to admit that his King engine is nothing more than his cowardice being exponentially worse than normal people in the face of danger. Admittedly, King knows he wouldn't be facing this current predicament had he told the Hero Association the truth. He was given credit for someone else's hero work. With King's stomach twisting into knots and making some gnarly noises, G4 begins to battle nearby. And as much as King is convinced he is the most cowardly human alive, he still tries to come up with some kind of plan. Although not that he thinks very long, since he quickly just runs back home covering his face. This points to King knowing there are many other heroes potentially around to cover for him, and fully relying on them. I think if King knew he was one of the few heroes able to face G4 or any other monster, he would have come clean long ago to avoid having people's deaths on his conscience. Once at home, King completely calms down and enjoys his dating sim, Doki Doki Sisters 2, while talking to himself. He is so enthralled with what's going on on screen, that he doesn't notice Saitama's arrival, nor his suggestion for a character name to use. After a moment of tense staring and trying to regain his composure, King uses his hero voice on Saitama to intimidate him into leaving his apartment. When the topic switches into video games, King can't help but show his true colors and even feel embarrassed for his current game choice. Besides being shocked at Saitama's blasé way of treating people who are ranked higher than him, he is also uncomfortable with him acting so friendly when King is older. His opinion of Saitama obviously changes later when he sees what he can do. As Saitama continues to pressure King about why he left the fight and whether he is so strong he is bored of fighting monsters, King can't find anything to say, with sweat dripping more and more off of his face. Eventually, when Saitama is about to leave, a giant crow monster comes crashing into King's apartment on the 22nd floor. Saitama blandly comments that monsters must be attracted to him for some reason, but King internally agrees with, yeah, I've always been super unlucky. King furthermore adds that it has been getting worse lately. Interestingly, without his rank, King was always confronted with dangerous monsters, but the fact that it's more now has nothing to do with him being unlucky. It stems directly from him being an S-Class hero, and one that monsters likely want to confront in order to test themselves. Not to mention, a lot of criminals want to get rid of King to ensure their activities are not interrupted. With Saitama questioning whether King will fight the bird monster, King's resolve begins to crumble, and he finally decides to tell someone the truth, as he is certainly not aware of the person he is telling it to. It's clear that King expected them to die, and at least wanted to get that off of his chest before the end. But it wasn't the end. Saitama kills the monster, while King soils his pants, making it all the more clear who the true strongest man is. This whole time, King was so afraid and trapped in his own mind that he hadn't realized who Saitama was, even though he had already encountered him. Hearing, are you okay? From Saitama, in his same confident and neutral tone, triggers King's memory of the man. Suddenly, he knows exactly who he is, even with the loss of hair. And he can't help but cry, realizing the mistake he has made. He has stolen this man's identity, his reputation, his position in society. King makes himself very small, his hands on his legs as he sits prostrated before Saitama, not quite being lectured, but something close to that. Defeated, King is is more than shocked that all Saitama wants is to play games with him once in a while. Sometime later, King does play games with Saitama, a team game, but instead of sharing and trying to work together, he insists he can do it all by himself, and Saitama doesn't need to be involved. Which sounds eerily similar to how Saitama faces monsters never needing any help. In that way, they have parallel mentalities, considering they both know what they're good at and want to do it alone. Also, when King is playing games, he has the same bland and somewhat cold personality that Saitama gets when he is facing threats. Fubuki Group while Fubuki is busy trying to recruit Saitama, King stops by to ask whether or not he has his game. And the expression he makes as he appears is straight out of The Shining, popping his head in the door. And Fubuki then makes an understandably frightened face at him being there. As it turns out, Saitama deleted King's save file of his game and was afraid to tell him because of how bad he felt. Fubuki, sitting with the boys, cannot comprehend why someone like King is visiting this low level unassuming hero. In her mind, S-Class should not be mixing with lower classes and King should certainly not want to be around a B-Class. This may seem like a mundane scene in King's life, but it gives Fubuki more insight into who he is as a man, as well as Genos and Saitama. Normally he keeps to himself and no one knows anything about his personal life, but now, Fubuki was given a free glimpse. And though Saitama was worried about King's reactions to the game debacle, King ends up taking it pretty well. Maybe because he knows he can replay it easily. He is a master gamer after all. 
Hero Hunt arc. Interestingly, as Garo is looking through Tadeo's book with him, Tadeo points out King as the strongest S-Class hero. In terms of ranking, King wouldn't be the strongest hero, but apparently, many people think he is despite being ranked 7 overall. Maybe that's why Tadeo feels so comfortable asking King for help saving Garo when he begins to monsterize. Later on, King is contacted by the Hero Association to be a bodyguard for the investors due to the growing monstrous threat in society. Keeping his voice serious as usual, the King persona activated, he declines because he is busy battling a monster. When in fact, the reality the situation is one, he can't be a bodyguard since it would ruin his reputation and the truth would come out, and two, he doesn't want to because he'd rather be playing video games. King is a master of manipulating the truth in order to get out of tough situations, and this is no different. He's technically not lying when he says he is fighting a monster and about to reach a boss, because he is, and that makes his bending of facts more believable, even if he is just talking about a video game. But because King turns down the request, Metal Bat is called instead. But lucky for King, he didn't have to face the centipede that showed up. Super Fight Arc During the Super Fight Tournament, the Monster Association sends out dozens of monsters to destroy everything, cause chaos, and injure humans. As monsters terrorize multiple cities and Saitama learns about martial arts through the competition, King busies himself with video games as per usual. The only reason he is alerted to anything going on is because his power goes out. He finally removes his headphones and notices the emergency sirens blaring outside, warning everyone of the ongoing attacks. Not much later, King decides to take a bike ride with a disguise into the city since alarms have stopped. He ends up bumping into Saitama who was walking back from the tournament. King had been hoping to buy a manga he wanted, but because of the terror, all these stores were closed. When he looks at Saitama, he notices something is off. This is interesting considering Kate Baldi usually has a neutral, even bored expression on his face, which makes him hard to read unless he gets angry from losing to King in video games. Since King could tell right away how bum Saitama was, it is clear how much he has honed his observational skills. King, despite not being much of a people person, offers an ear to Saitama. He even suggests that he keep hoping for the best and not give up. On his Hair. This of course riles Saitama up since he wasn't worried about his baldness. He's worried about how he is so strong that no one can even offer a challenge. Being weak himself, King doesn't understand why being too strong is an issue. Suiru had thought the same thing, and from a gaming perspective, being good or strong makes the game easier and causes less stress. But even in terms of heroics, King finds that reaching a milestone like that would be useful in order to complete hero work. Because Saitama thinks that King can only analyze in terms of gaming, he says that his power level would be like King reaching a level cap on a character. King counters that example with the fact that there are other things to do in the game regardless, like item collection, interacting with other players, and breaking records. And you know what, despite this referring to games, it is actually pretty sound advice. If Saitama only focuses on how strong he is and not on how the public perceives him, nor how other heroes feel about him, then of course he is going to feel like there is nothing more he can do as a hero. When that advice doesn't seem to appease Saitama, King offers some more gems, join a club, go on a trip, meet people outside of his work. But Saitama knocks everything down, which causes King to just start getting annoyed. Sounding more wise than ever, King continues with his observations of Saitama's behavior. He's bored, but he's not willing to make an effort, and he refused to leave his comfort zone to experience new things. These are some pretty great points, although I can't say that King is the best person to be complaining about this, considering he is a loner who stays at home all the time to play games, but that's another story. Eventually, King calms Saitama down by reminding him that life is a great unknown that isn't like a video game with an expected ending. There's a difference between becoming the strongest and being the strongest hero. Funny that, as I said before, people consider King the strongest hero even with his ranking. Having said that, King reminds Saitama that a hero's job isn't to kill all the monsters and be content with that, but rather to save as many people as possible. Even if Saitama points out that King shouldn't be lecturing about hero work, King is right to tell him that being the strongest doesn't equal being the best. Saitama himself feels like he always arrives a little too late when he is meant to save people, and that could be something he very well works on. But in the end, we can't really give King too many props for his deep and insightful speech, because he took it all from a manga, which I imagine we all have to some extent before. King does manage to get Saitama out of his rut by inviting him over to play games and allowing him a handicap. Saitama insists he won't even get mad if he loses because he feels so numb, but once King mentions he'll only be using two fingers, Saitama's blood is boiling. The game is back on. But before they get to King's place, Garo comes across the two heroes, completely ignoring Saitama. He remembers seeing King in Tadeo's book, he even has his photo on his wall. Attempting to hunt King, Garo rushes in intending to predict his next move, one of dozens of scenarios. Just as Garo is in front of King, startling the scared man, Saitama swiftly kicks him aside. Had Saitama not been there, King would have stood no chance, demonstrating once more his pendulum of good and bad luck coming together. Visibly shaken and sweating, King admits he had no idea
idea who he is. But when Saitama asks about any news, he tells him about both the monster attacks and the hero hunter, not realizing they just neutralized him. When Garo awakens, all he remembers is facing King and imagining all the ways that King could move next. He drags himself out of the clothing store he was kicked into, holding his sides in pain. Though wanting to attack Death Gatling next, he realizes King gave him much more damage than he imagined. Too bad it was actually Saitama, but it's the norm by now. In the next scene, we jump to King versus Saitama, with Saitama pumped up and screaming, ora ora ora, over and over again. King calmly sighs while saying, yare yare, and proceeds to destroy Saitama in the fighting game with just two fingers as promised. King successfully completes a 99 hit combo against Saitama's giant monster character with his sexy bunny girl. At least King feels bad for the combo considering it was a five minute endless attack that leaves Saitama a drooling mess. This dynamic is also very reminiscent of how Saitama treats Speedo sound Sonic, don't you agree? Especially if you remember how bad Saitama felt when he accidentally hit his knuckle on Sonic's parts. Monster Association Arc King and Saitama continue playing video games as the Monster Association awaits Hero's arrival and at the same time Garo becomes more and more monster like. King also continues to win but that goes without saying. Then a sudden ringing noise appears and King remembers that he has a device that sends out distress signals in his shirt pocket. But King notices that another hero is already on the way there. With Genos missing, King asks where he is and Saitama admits he hasn't been back since yesterday. This worries King more so than Saitama because he is aware of the monster situation going on. Consider that if King never noticed Genos was missing and didn't worry for his safety, would Saitama have checked on the young cyborg? Seems to me that King might have saved him as well as Bang and Bomb's lives by getting Saitama involved with the Elder Centipede destruction. Before getting to the location where Elder Centipede is, King has the foresight to ask for information from the Hero Association. He wants a way to provoke the giant bug with the association expecting him to lure it away from the injured heroes. Once he's there, King does not hesitate to conjure up every last drop of his courage and poker face powers to get Elder Centipede to come his way. He shouts with a loudspeaker, not stuttering once, spewing all the insults he could think of while also tempting the monster with Blast's name. As cowardly as King is, he doesn't hold back, even telling Elder Centipede that he ran away pissing himself because of Blast. Even a stronger hero, and by that I mean one that can actually fight, might just be petrified in the face of this massive monster. So if nothing else, our boy King deserves some praise for this tactic. Not only that, but King already thought of the risks involved, like the small time frame, as well as the blast radius that can be caused from facing Elder Centipede. Everything is well assessed and planned for, with Saitama having the simple job of just showing up at the right moment and punching the centipede into oblivion. Later, King plus Bang and Bomb are shown hanging out with Saitama and Genos, recovering from the hard fought battles. Fubuki arrives, wondering why more and more people are at Saitama's place. Not to mention that they're also relaxed and uncaring of the eminent dangers from the Monster Association. Though Saitama blows off her freak out of how dire the situation is, King agrees that it is not the usual. But thanks to Fubuki, the gang is made aware of the distress signals they've been missing due to their broken gadgets. Eventually, Genos detects a high speed person arriving and shoves King out the door, completely oblivious to the pool of sweat forming all over King's body. Luckily, it turns out to be Dr. Kusheno with some meat. But the fact that King faced the enemy must prove that he's getting braver in some ways, right? Unless he was only brave because he knew all the heroes were inside the apartment to back him up in case he needed help. Too bad he hasn't gotten physically stronger though. He misses out on the hot pot with all the strong people around stealing every piece and knocking him out. After waking up, King brings out Saitama's garbage, still covered in the mess from yesterday's fight, the monster, and the hot pot. In spite of missing the meal and being knocked out, King appreciates the good rest he got. Saitama's city is quiet due to the monsters living there and the lack of population, but he realizes that having to deal with monsters all the time wouldn't be worth living in a peaceful area. Back at his place, the Hero Association staff are looking for him. When they ask where he's been and he tells them Z City, you know, the one that's abandoned and full of monsters, they mistake the hot pot mess on his clothes for remnants of monsters he has killed. King is brought into head Headquarters because now that Narenki's team hasn't returned with his son, he needs to rely on heroes, as he should have to begin with. King is escorted to where his hero teammates are, and with perfect timing since they were all at each other's throats and uncooperative. As usual, his aura is overwhelming and fills up the room as soon as he steps in. Funnily enough, Sweet Mask's rough way of speaking and constant questions catch King off guard and nearly makes him tell the truth as to where he has been. But the staff members who brought him quickly cover it up without knowing and help repair his image. I mean, even Tatsumaki is impressed by the story of King who was fighting monsters all night, but it also guarantees his spot on the counterattack against the Monster Association. Yikes. King flees the meeting, hiding in a room he assumes is empty. Too bad that Bang's also in the room and manages to startle him when he asks, What are you up to? 
It's really the perfect question because King certainly wants to find a way out of the mission without them noticing, and he's been caught. But as Bang presses King for more information, he can't help but let him know about the S-Class heroes headed underground. He gets pressured so much that his King engine begins roaring, and even Zombie Man can hear it through the walls. With nothing to lose now that King has spilled the beans, he has to come up with a new plan. He has been assigned an entry point to the Monster Association, but he is meant to go alone. We all know that could only go wrong, so in order to avoid certain death, King convinces Bang that they bring Genos and Saitama with them. And since the monsters can be found under Z City, all they have to do is meet at Saitama's place like usual. With a plan like this, what could go wrong? A lot goes wrong, like King ending up alone in the base, but we'll get to that. As discussed, King meets the heroes at Saitama's place, but the bald hero has already gone ahead of them. With the true strongest man not around, King's mask of bravery slips ever so slightly, and now he is sweating with no idea what the next move should be. He figures they should wait for Saitama, for one, because he is the only one who knows the truth about King. And Fubuki agrees, but not for the reason you'd think. She announces them as being the new Fubuki group, which we can also refer to as the Saitama group, seeing as they are always somehow together. In the end, Genos, the poor, innocent, naive boy that he is, says it's better that they go first while he stays behind to wait for Saitama. In other words, King is back to being in a tight spot while his heart rate skyrockets into space. As expected, King ends up alone, separated even from the Saitama group of friends. Feeling the blast of Saitama's fighting with Overgrown Rover, he can't help but be scared to death. And I guess that's one good thing about being alone. He doesn't have to worry about keeping a straight face. But all King can think about is why when they split into two groups did he end up by himself? His math checks out. However, since they don't know his real abilities, which I'd say lie more in mental attacks, King got the short end of the stick. All he can do is keep calm and keep moving, hoping monsters cross other heroes' paths before they reach him. And if that isn't enough, King tries to erase his presence by becoming a cloud or a microbe. If it had succeeded, we could have added it to the list of amazing things he can do, but instead a flying creature finds him, seeking out the heroes to report back to Psychos. Right after King flees from the surveying monster, his name is called and he nearly has a heart attack. His face reflects a true form of terror, honestly. Behind him stands a small boy, Waganma, which if you've been following is now on the surface. This fraud cries and pretends to need King's help. But as he tries to approach, King's engine goes off again. Now this is likely because of the shock he just got, but it works perfectly to defer this fake Waganma. The boy stops in his tracks at the sight of King's haunting expression. Though he tries to warn the child that he's not the right hero to rely on, on, everything he says sounds like a threat, because the fake knows he's trying to trick King. Even if the intimidation tactics this time weren't done purposely, they still worked. The more King tries to tell the child how useless he is and how pointless it is to believe in him, the more his gaze turns dark and threatening. When he says, it will only turn into despair, the monster can't hide his own fear, and he is so frightened so certain nothing but death awaits that he dies from his form melting apart and stabbing into his organs. Who else can say they killed a monster with fear alone? King continues on, still more than shaken about what he just experienced. Because of that, his King engine is still banging into his chest when he comes across Tadeo, the real Tadeo. His expression remains cold and evil, a deadly glare aimed at the lost child. If it weren't for King having just seen an imposter, he would have been more welcoming of Tadeo. Yet even with his unwelcoming stare, Tadeo cannot help but feel relieved at seeing him and rushes forward. But King won't fall for the same trick twice, even if it's not a trick. With the same confidence, he tells a boy that it's useless because he already knows. He changes his look to a piercing gaze, his eyes round and sharp like bullets. When Tadeo has no idea what he's talking about, King approaches with an accusing tone and warns the monster off. And wouldn't you know, there was actually a monster waiting to attack behind Tadeo. A small invisible monster shows itself and apologizes before running off where it came from. When King realizes his mistake and remembers who he is, at least to the public, he calms down and offers his hand to Tadeo. Let's not lie though, we know it's more to comfort himself. On their way back up to the surface, King has to climb stairs with Tadeo, his heart pounding because of how out of shape he is. Tadeo instead takes it to mean that he is raring to go into battle. When they discover an elevator, the relief on King's face is one of a kind. It's an odd elevator that requires water to fill a bucket in order for them to go upwards, and they have no choice but to watch and wait. Unfortunately, in the time they're waiting, Saitama starts fighting with Orochi's long limbs spreading throughout the tunnel. He ends up breaking some pieces of the wall, and it drops inside the bucket connected to the elevator. After much screaming and panicking due to the elevator's wild movements, not to forget the tremors caused by Tatsumaki's fight, King and Tadeo are protected by a telekinetic protective orb, and Tadeo calls it King's Super King State. It is not. In fact, even this light surrounding them cannot protect them from the breaking of the elevator cable as they begin to fall. King tries his best to slow the fall with the handbrake, but his arms are not strong enough to force a stop. But as luck would have it, King and Tadeo's elevator crushes part of Orochi squishy body, and it not only slows the descent, 
but also helps him get out of that death trap. King lands on the pavement with Tadeo close to his chest the top of him. We gotta be proud of him for at least trying to protect the young boy. Just then, Genos asks where Saitama and the rest are, but King has no idea since he has been alone this whole time. The remnants of Orochi's body tries to close in on them and absorb them, but Genos' new additions make it easy to destroy the sticky globs. For the most part, King stays away from the fighting by using Tadeo as a shield and an excuse. Besides, even the other S-Class heroes couldn't face Psychos in her ultimate form. King tells Genos they should leave the fighting to Tatsumaki, not even knowing how scared he is under wraps. Everyone is too busy watching the psychic power battle anyways, and Tatsumaki, watching King leave, thinks he made the right decision because of her abilities and the scale of the fight. King may be the strongest man, but he is still ranked number 7. Meanwhile, King is just relieved to be running as fast and as far away as possible with Tadeo in front of him. Still, I can't help but be impressed by him putting the little boy's safety first, even if it also works in his favor. Because if he was truly the big scaredy cat that he thinks he is, wouldn't it be easier to run ahead and hope the kid makes it? But no, it's not what he's doing. He's going at Tadeo's speed to make sure he gets away safely. King's worst enemy returns though, stairs. As Tadeo runs up the staircase easily, King goes slower, panting, and sweating. But when the building tips over from Tatsumaki twisting the city's map, they're forced to run down these stairs instead. King has been through numerous life-threatening ordeals, and he is still not any closer to being safe. After the obstacle course of death ends, King and Tadeo end up coming across a strange vehicle blocking their way in the middle of the road. It's not visible, but it is a nuisance nonetheless, so King decides to go around it, with Metal Bat having the same idea from the opposite side. It turns out to be a reinforced vehicle with a quantum stealth shield that some lower ranked heroes were using to keep themselves safe from ambush. It's cool and all, but King just wants to know if it's possible for him to borrow a slab so he can run off undetected. King then gets congratulated for saving Tadeo by Sakingar, with King wishing he could say he was more helpful, but knowing that he wasn't. Sakingar shares some powerful words about every person counting when they're doing the right thing in the right place. King contemplates what that could mean for someone like like him. He remembers how even if he couldn't fight Elder Centipede, he was able to lend a hand by getting his attention. With that, King resolves to be useful in the same way until a stronger hero can make a difference with his assistance. He will be like a stone, which Metal Bat takes as King being humble. But before King can go, Tadeo makes a request of him. Please save Garo and don't bully him. However, King isn't told his name, nor does he know who Tadeo is referring to, since he only calls him uncle. Metal Bat, the absolute mad lad, rigs up a slingshot for him and King to use to get back to the battlefield and lend a hand. Now, I don't know about most of you, but if I was told I'd be climbing into a giant slingshot just to avoid some cracking streets, I'd take my chances with the cracks. But King is pulled back and forced to go, so he doesn't resist holding onto Metal Bat for dear life, shaking while putting on a brave face for the kids. He is flung so fast that he barely has time to control himself and his loud screams until Metal Bat reminds him to be quiet and shushes him. Luck must be encouraging King to do good deeds because he lands into a sports net and falls down into a bush without much injury. Though King's fear is mostly unwarranted from where he is, as the heroes facing the monster executives are in much more danger. Tatsumaki has used up most of her power fighting psychos. Sweet Mask is ripped apart by Ugly. Tank Top Master can barely keep himself from being chewed alive. Fubuki has no energy left after deflecting Rover and saving Genos from an explosion and Bang, Bomb, and Genos can only do so much. They need King. When everything seems absolutely hopeless, King does what he does best. He bluffs the hell out of everyone. Much like his namesake, King stands on top of rubble. His arms cross confidently, and his shirt blowing in the wind. His heart rumbles with the King's engine, we know so well, as he faces down Black S and Golden S, among others. King continues to keep his gaze steely and locked on the sea of Black S, discussing how to deal with him. Now he's also got the attention of Evil Natural Water and Homeless Emperor, though. He finally speaks to let out a cocky laugh. This is unlike any other situation King has been in. These monsters are at the peak of their power. His King engine did nothing but make them seek out the sound with bloodlust. His intimidating bluffs won't work this time, and he knows it too well because that's just how powerful these executives are. When he considers how to get out of this deadly game he's in, King hears someone call his name and brightens up immediately thinking it's Saitama. It is not. King's luck is clearly swaying on the bad side right now. His face turns blank and disappointed when he realizes it is Child Emperor and Puri Puri Prisoner. The stare down continues. King tries to keep himself alive by not making any moves, and the monsters take it as him waiting for them to make the first move. In a way, they're right since King definitely won't be the first to strike. Homeless Emperor wants to test out King's abilities first, intending to shoot his light energy at him, which would vaporize him instantaneously. But King of the Bluff strikes again. Before Homeless Emperor launches his attack, King's eyes widen and he turns very serious, 
bringing his attention to the ground beneath his feet, saying nothing but mundane things like, those little chunks of rubble are unstable. King successfully gets inside his opponent's head. Now, Homeless Emperor's mind is reeling with thoughts and what ifs, worrying that he might be overlooking something about the strongest hero. King appears to him like a giant obstacle with no flaws, able to smash any foe down into nothingness. Unknowingly, Homeless Emperor turns the tables on King by mentioning that he'll show everyone the real him. That gets the blonde man sweating, laughing out of nervousness with his eyes wild with fear, making him look pretty insane honestly. But wouldn't you know, luck returns to King because Homeless Emperor mistakes his comment about being just a regular human for a remark about himself. Homeless Emperor loses his cool, and thanks to that, Zombie Man can grab him and pin him down. King 1, Homeless Emperor 0. With that first loss, Black S begins to worry as well. He wonders why Evil Natural Water isn't attacking King, and wrongly assumes it is because the hero abandoned his killing intent. As to do that, he would actually need to have some to begin with. Then comes Child Emperor's brilliant plan to group all the monsters up so King can unleash his super spark in King mode and release his greatest attack. After hearing that and knowing Child Emperor's brain doesn't work as well when he's low on sugar, King understands that sugar levels are important. But that's not all. He also finds out that Black S and Golden S combined makes up a massive 54 trillion monster to defeat. Even for a gamer like King, this is way beyond fighting the final battle. As Child Emperor tries to make King attack before the merge happens, we all know King can't, Platinum S is created. King can't think of a way out of this mess anymore, so he prepares to beg for his life and possibly forgiveness, but his motions are so epic and strong that everyone watching is in awe and excited for what's coming next. The heroes begin to cheer him on, the hero's hero, but King only takes it as them pushing him closer to his own demise. As they all get cut down for distracting from the fight, Platinum S awaits King's next move with a confident smile. The two prepare for an attack at the same time, King one step away from groveling, but deciding to finally shout, Ultimate Hellfire Burst Wave Motion Cannon. Does he believe it'll work? No, not in the least, but does it? Well, King doesn't suddenly develop powers, but Garo races in between them so quickly that he knocks over everyone and kills Ugly as a bonus. The timing is so impeccable that even King can't hide his surprise at how well it went. He stares at his hands in shock, falling to the ground as he continues to question where that suddenly came from. Upon seeing Saitama, King presumes he is the one who saved them all. He grabs his friend's shoulders with relief, smiling and finally calming down. So glad for this to be over now that Saitama is around, as poor Garo is getting his credit stolen now. While King continues to blubber and release the tension he had built up, he notices Genos nearby and clears his throat. The facade must be maintained at all costs. King changes his story to how glad he is to have shown off his power to Saitama. He also subtly switches topics by pointing out that Genos did a good job saving Tatsumaki. Released from the fight at last, King focuses on helping the injured heroes. Just as he is looking over Tatsumaki, Blast makes his appearance and makes King's eyes go cartoonish. Utterly shocked that Blast knows who he is, King has to school his expression back to a neutral one when he calls his name. He is therefore tasked with taking care of Tatsumaki as Blast must go and she is still unconscious. Of the people there, only King and Saitama see into the portal that Blast opens up and all the heroes inside that are clearly not of their world. And just like that, Blast is gone. As more monsters appear and evil natural water turns into an ocean, King is left stranded with Tatsumaki surrounded by water and destruction. At the same time, Fubuki arrives with their new group, proud that they have all survived. King can't really recognize Tank Top Master though because of how bloated he is. Even with a flood and a vessel headed their way, King can't help but panic, but he does not abandon Tatsumaki or the group. Somehow Tank Top Master gathers enough strength to lift them all up, including Super Alloy Darkshine. Tank Top Master asks King to use his power to catch everyone, but there is absolutely no way that could ever happen. King makes up a lie about how these shockwaves might hurt everyone so it's better not to rely on him. Saitama then appears atop the vessel unbeknownst to everyone else, and King, almost seeming to squeal at his arrival, turns back into a proper bold hero and tells him all to wait. Saitama, as we all know, can do some pretty impossible things, and King believes in just that happening again. The waves get deflected with none of them seeing the source, so King gets the credit for his good decision. As the waves begin to rise again, Pig God rushes to them, leaping with his mouth wide open, and inhales them all. The waves swallow them up just as he has them all safely in his mouth. Will there be any casualties? Who's to say, but we'll have to wait and see how this unfolds. Although at this point, I'm pretty sure we can all agree that it is unlikely that King will die though. What's next for King. Since King told Saitama he'd like to not let down the people who truly believe he's a hero, hopefully we'll see some kind of training arc for him in the near future. Or maybe he'll really retire from being a hero so we can go back to having a peaceful gaming life after all. If you're expecting King to get some kind of power up, don't. The author said a while ago that King will continue to be just as he is, a regular guy. As always, I'm Slice of Otaku. Thank you all so much for watching and have an awesome day. I love you.